Well, hey guys, what are we going to do? Well, if you watched the live feed this morning, now I do know that this is probably three weeks in the future for everyone, uh, but I did a live feed this morning explaining this. I have decided I'm gonna start doing some breakdown videos on knives that come in if it's okay with the owner. Um, this is the Brown Knives Cortex, but before we really get into it, you know what to do. Turn down the volume because here comes a bit of music. If you go into the Wayback Machine, you'll see about three weeks ago, uh, uh, actually probably about a week ago at this point, you would see that I did a video about this knife um, and it is a great knife. I already have done the teardown on this. I have to give you a disclaimer. I'm not gonna do all the steps of the spa treatment on this because I filmed it and there was an issue. I filmed it, I, I tried something new. I filmed it with an actual camera and the file just didn't come out. It was glitchy. Uh, and I don't think it has anything to do with the camera, and I don't think it has anything to do with the interface between the camera and the th I think that the memory card that I had for that camera is just bad. So at any rate, we'll just film it again uh, on the phone. I'll just take this knife apart. I'll show you all the internal components. I will explain what I do for a teardown and cleanup. Um, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You've seen it before. So without any further ado, let's meet up down at the counter. Right, guys, this is going to be interesting because I am going to do it from behind the camera. So the first thing we're going to need is tools, of course. Um, so this is a T8 on this. Uh, T8, if you guys were to notice, mine are security torques, but they work just fine. So this knife, you have to kind of take it apart from two different directions. Pivot comes out here, and then this is your other screw that is a structural screw that holds the knife together. So let's get it set down. We'll get some stuff laid out here. And I'm going to get my bowl. If you hang out just for a moment, I'm going to get my bowl to put some parts in. So through the magic of editing, that took absolutely zero time. But for me, it took a little bit because my wife always moved this around. So I stick it on the side of the refrigerator. And then for some reason, it's just not there when I come back to it. So let's go ahead and get into this. So the way I recommend doing this is the easiest way is I take the pivot screw out first. And I'm going to have to re-Loctite this because I did use a little bit of blue Loctite. So I am actually going to do some cleaning on this. You can see I used a little bit of the blue and I've started using the stick. It was recommended by you guys and I do like it. It seems to, it seems to do a good bit better. So we'll get this apart and then I'm going to go get the rest of the stuff I'm going to need for the cleanup because I wasn't planning on doing very much cleanup. So those are the only two screws you have to remove to do a disassembly of this knife. The pivot screw on the lock scale side and the uh, structural screw on the show scale side. So let's go ahead. And then once you do that, this knife just pretty much just falls apart. Now it does have washers and as you can see, remember I told you guys, there is the stop pin on this knife. It is an integral part of the blade. Um, I believe that has been milled. I'm not sure. I don't feel as though that was, I don't know. Let's zoom in on it. Can we zoom in on it and get a clear picture? Does it look like there's a seam on that? Yeah, that definitely, that's probably an in interference fit, um, which means that it's a little bit bigger than the actual hole that's in the blade. And then it was pressed through to make it permanent. So there's your blade. Here is your, the brown double row bearings. And they're not a true double row set of bearings. Like I said, they're just kind of out of order from each other. I do have to say this knife is smooth, but I'm not a fan of the larger, more numerous bearings. But I have to say that this knife is really smooth. There's also a set of bearings that Shirogorovs use that make their knives incredibly smooth. And it is a double row bearing, but their bearings are very, very small. And they're not set in the race like this. So there's that. As you can see, there is a metal washer between the titanium, if I can get it out, between the titanium and the bearings. Um, so there's your bearing race washer, and it is steel. If you look, there's the cutout that I talked about for the flipper tap. Now, if you remember in the video, I said it only drops in a little bit in the video, but 
if you look at how deep that cutout is, what that allows is that that allows that flipper tab to be nice and wide and it sits in there and it still will allow that travel of the lock bar to increase as it needs to as the knife wears. So you can see I got some blue Loctite gunk in there. So let's go ahead. There's that. Then here is, there is internal milling on these. It is the cortex. There's the brain. You can see that the screws are there. The bottoms of the screws, look at those beautiful scales. And then you have another set of bearings and your pivot. Now I'm not going to take the washer out of this one. There's no real need to. I don't really need to. I already cleaned it once. This is your attachment screw for your backspacer. Imagine of editing, I said something that was stupid. I was trying to say that this was your pocket clip screw. It's not. Your pocket clip screws are here. This is simply pinned and screwed. That is really in there. I, I'm pretty sure that that's the backside of one of these on this. There is no movement in that. So, ceramic detent. You can see all the milling inside. Now, I know that there's going to be some people that question and ask, what are these holes? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I already know what those holes, oh, look at that. I didn't even notice that. Blaine Washington, USA. I do know what those are for. Those screws are simply there because when this is done and they're on both sides, lots of knife has these. The video I'm about to shoot after this, you'll see them as well. You'll see that in a, a few days. These are so that this can be screwed down onto a platen, and that's how they do the milling because you have to mill both sides. So that allows them to screw it from, either screw it down here or screw it down this way to do their internal milling and their, you know, the milling on the knife. So that's what those extra holes are for. Those are positioning screws for machining. And it's clever because they're on the inside, you don't see them. Um, I'll go grab something right now and show you a little comparison. So if you have a Sebenza, you already know about these holes. Now these ones aren't, aren't threaded, but there's two of them and they're in the exact same place on either side. This one just becomes part of the lock bar cutout. And here is the it, it on that side. It's the same thing. That's what it's there for. It's for positioning while machining. But let's go ahead and we'll do some more cleanup on this. So um, like I said, I don't really need to do cleanup on anything except the pivot. And I really don't think I need to do it on that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe that off a little bit. We have a little bit of blue Loctite. You can see there's some in there. And I'm just going to take a look and see, is there still really, no, there's not really much on there. So what we'll do is we'll re-Loctite that and re-lube the parts as we need to. I don't really need to do cleanup. Usually what I would do is take a little bit of rubbing alcohol. You can see all these little circles on this rag. I put a little bit of rubbing alcohol in it and I take the, the bearings and I just rub them on the alcohol soaked rag and clean them up and then I put them back in. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to get my Loctite and I have started guys using the blue Loctite stick. I do like it. You guys recommended it. It seems to work really well. It's not as messy and it's a lot easier to re to take that knife back apart. Like I really didn't struggle. But um, so I used it on my Norseman, which does have a tendency to break loose. And this seems to be holding it great and it works really well. So let's go ahead. And first thing we'll do is we will get this knife ready for reassembly. So I usually start with whichever side I have my pivot on. I didn't take the pivot out on this. I put my bearings in. I will put a new drop of lube because that's been sitting and I use the KPL and, oh, sorry guys, sorry, I'm not even going to try and edit that one out. I, I am behind the camera. I use the KPL and the KPL Heavy. There are some knives this isn't ideal for, um, Norseman in particular, because of the large gap and it gets dirty, but I use the KPL and the KPL Heavy. Those seem to be about the, less, the best lubricants I've found for knives. So, so you guys know, I try not to over lubricate because you don't want oil going everywhere. This is about how much I use right there. And I run it, if you watch, I run it down the actual pivot and then onto the bearing. That's how much you need. That little drop right there is just enough. Put the blade back in. Then I lay it down. I will get this piece ready. And I take the KPL heavy because I wiped this off while you guys were watching, weren't watching. And I put just, come on, come on out. This stuff is really thick. Just a drop, that's actually too much. 
That was way too much. That's really all you need. There's a little drop of the KPL Heavy, and the KPL Heavy is a gel. I've even marked my caps with colors so that I don't get the caps mixed up. Um, so I set, I'll set that back down. Next row of bearings. And then I put the washer, this is, you know, there's different ways to do this. Um, I put the actual washer on top of the bearings. And now if it would focus, now we're ready to just put a little bit of Loctite. That was my coffee pot. It's a tiny bit of Loctite. I wish that this had a smaller tip to it. This could get, are you going to work with me here or what? So I just take a little bit of the blue Loctite and I just put it on the threads, just like, just like the KPL Heavy, I put too much. So I'm gonna smear this around a little bit. Just on the head of it. Hang on a second, guys. So after playing my least favorite game with knives of where did the screw go, um, now we're ready to put the pivot screw back in. And so we'll put the pivot screw back in. And now when you guys do a knife and you put a knife back together, and I know this has been a comedy of errors the way it's getting filmed. Uh, let's zoom back out, actually. So when I put a pivot screw in, what I do is I, I find, like, I've got no blade play there. And so I'll just tighten it down just to a tightness where I have no blade play either way, this way, so like this, or like this. And then I check the action and oh my gosh, guys, the action on this thing is amazing once it's, it's even better than it was in the video that you guys saw. So that's what's inside a brown cortex. Now I'm gonna try and find a better way to film these from the top down. As you guys could see, that was not optimal. Um, but you can see, like I was saying, like in the internals, you can kind of see, yeah, that, yeah, that flipper tab drops down in, but you, it only drops in a little bit, but then you can really see when it's apart the forward thinking that went into that to allow him to have that thicker, that thicker, much thicker flipper tab on this top flipper that drops down in. And then you, that is going to allow that deep cut in that is going to allow some, some offset for that to continue so that as this, as this lock bar and uh, lock bar interface starts to wear the lock bar insert and the interface here, the radius, it's going to allow it to work its way up, but not affect the lockup of the knife. So really, really superb idea, well done. And it's just a way to jam. That is a big, guys, that is a big thick flipper tab inside a relatively thin knife. And it, I, I, that was my fault, but it really, really allows you good purchase on that flipper tab. So yeah, <laughs> big, big, big props to Brown Knives on on coming up with some innovative things. And like I said, first knife I've ever seen with a stop pin on the blade. So let's meet back up at the top and have some final thoughts on this yes, teardown. I hope you enjoyed this. I don't very often do teardown videos. Um, it was something I saw Nick do it a lot and I use it as a reference a lot of times, but I didn't really think about doing it. And the fact is it's difficult the way I have my stuff set up to film it that way. I do know that I can set this up in a fashion where I can film down. Um, I'm just going to have to look at, there's an extension that I have. I actually have it and I can do it. So we're going to look at that uh, in the future, uh, doing this in a different fashion at a different angle. But if this is content you like, I'm just, I'm wanting to add new things to the channel because I don't want the channel to be one dimensional. I don't want to change the direction the channel goes. I always want this to be like, I want it to be unrefined. I don't want it to be super clean and crisp and, and look like I have a degree in filmography and things like that. I, I don't need that. Uh, but what I want is I want to provide with content that keeps you guys engaged, keeps you guys coming back to look and see what's Mike doing today. So with that being said, that's the end of the video. Brown Knives, if you, if you can afford to get one, like I said in the video you saw, oh, probably a week or so ago, amazing knife, amazing knife. And I, like all the knives are amazing. There's just the, the other one that he has is not a design that speaks to me. This is a great, great knife, the Cortex. So I love you guys. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down. As always, there is a membership tab below if you want to support the channel with a monthly su subscription. There's also an applause tab. If you just like a video and you want to donate, like, hey, here's a couple bucks, good job. You can do that as well. 
I try to put things in the corners, but it's gotten harder and harder to find things that I really want to tag in the videos. So I just leave it to say there would be probably something. And if you want to join and you don't want to have to try to find a, a, a like a subscription tab and go back to my channel, the watermark that's in the corner of every video can be used to subscribe to the channel. And I would ask that if you want to see every bit of content that you hit that bell and make it all content. Otherwise, you will not get notified. I love you guys. Keep it clean in the comments below and I will talk to you and see you in the next video. Does it work? Historically, it doesn't.